Look what came in the mail like 20 minutes ago. I ran upstairs and threw some stuff on my face. For today's video, I'm going to be reviewing the new Natasha Denona Mini Biba and the Rose Cheek Duo. So if you want to see my thoughts as well as comparing to some palettes that I think are similar and just doing the whole thing, then just keep watching. First things first, my friends, let's get into the major details of this launch. It is currently available basically anywhere that you can find Natasha Denona, the Natasha Denona website. So shipping's expensive, so I don't really recommend it. At least it was for me. Sephora and Beautylish. Now in this launch, like I said, there are two items. The main attraction here is going to be the Mini Biba eyeshadow palette, but of course they also do have the Rose Cheek Duo to talk about with you. I'm going to have timestamps so that you can skip through what you're interested in, but Let's get into, of course, the eyeshadow palette first. So this right here is the Mini Beebush palette. If you want to know my initial thoughts before I pick this up, I will link the video down below. I did a whole video covering it. But basically, I wasn't super excited about this color story, but I knew it's the type of color story that I would end up using. It's just another neutral palette. But quite honestly, I don't mind a neutral palette in the minis because this is most likely what I'm going to grab for to travel for anyways. So while it's unexciting, I know I'm about to use it a lot and I like that it's put into one of her mini five pan palettes. This is $25 and here's what the box looks like that it's going to come in. Basically the, the box that it always comes in, you need to take a look at the back here. You will see that the palette is made in Italy and it has a 24 month shelf life. This palette is going to be at $25. If you've never heard my spiel on this style of eyeshadow, I think it is a great way to try Natasha Denona's formula without breaking the bank all at once. If you do that calculations of the product, it technically is not as good of a value, but like I said, it doesn't hurt your wallet all at once. So that in of itself is a win. It's also very travel friendly. The packaging is very, very simple, but I like it. I think it feels sturdy. It's very functional. On the back, it will have all of the details that you need, as well as the shade descriptions and names, which I love. I love that it is an acrylic top, so you can see exactly what colors that you have. And of course, here are the five shades for the palette. Now, if you didn't know, the Mini Biba, it is a mini of the ever so popular Biba palette. So this is a 15 pound palette, it's $129. That's when 129 versus 25 really comes into play. But the claim to fame for Biba is that it's just one of the best, most reliable, neutral, everyday palettes. And my initial first impressions were, I didn't think the mini Biba really, truly looked like it. I suppose it is an extension because Natasha has this kind of organized by colors like cooler, warmer, neutral, and this would be kind of the more rosy row. But still, this reminded me a lot more of the glam face palettes, but I'll get into that in the swatch portion. But I did think it was interesting that this is how she chose to do the extension. There's just other palettes in the Natasha line that I think of over the Bebo when I see this palette. Though, in all reality, it's not that serious. I was surprised though by the amount of you who wished she had kind of taken some shades from this palette and put it in a five pan so you can have a Biba on the go. Personally, I'd rather have five new shades, but interesting that a lot of you are on the same page with that. So this palette does feature five brand new nude and brown shades with rosy undertones. So these shades are not going to be available in the big palette. So let's get to swatching. I do want to apologize for my nails and what you're about to win is with them. I tried to keep up with them and it's it's not going well anyway. <laughs> so the first shade that we have is Bruno, which is a creamy matte. It is a deep mahogany brown. And we have Izzy, which is also a creamy matte. It is a nude dusty rose. And then Blaze Nude, which is a metallic described as a light rosy nude. Let's see how we swatch here. That didn't swatch that good, did it now? Okay, the rose is okay. Okay, the shimmer looks quite pretty. Let me layer a little bit more of Bruno. Not swatching the best. Normally I find that Natasha Denona's matte swatch better. Let me give you an example. I'm just going to grab Coco right here. I went pretty light. 
See how much smoother this is? So anyways, we'll see how it translates to the eyelids, but I do notice that that matte seems to be swatching a little bit different. Maybe I'm looking too far into it. And then we have Blush, which is a creamy matte, a light medium dusty coral, and then Wink, which is a cream to powder and is a medium dusty coral brown. So again, Blush, that swatched really beautifully and wink. Oof, that cream to powder, you can see it does have a slight sheen to it, which I find to be quite flattering on the eyelid, and that swatch beautifully. I've been loving her cream to powder formulation. I think they're pretty good and very easy to work with. So I'm very intrigued to see how this guy works. I'm gonna do this eye first, and then I'll be back to share my experience with you. I'm back. I got the look figured out. You can see it's pretty simple and wearable, which I think is the kind of look that you're going for if you were going to pick up this palette. I have some thoughts. I re <laughs> It'll be interesting. So the first shade that I'm going to go into is Plush. This is that creamy matte. I am just using a Kaleidos crease brush for this. And I'm going to blend this in the inner half of the crease. This is a very pretty blushy transition shade. I really think if you're doing a pink cheek, this will pull the whole look together if you're into those monochromatic kind of looks, which I really am. And you can see I have this bleeding throughout the whole look, so we'll be back with this shade. But I really, really love it, and I'm gonna put this along the lower lash line. So what's really important to me, especially in a palette this small, is that all of the shades have their own purpose. So right next to it, I want to put some of Izzy right here, which has a little bit more neutralness to it. It has that pinky undertone still, but it's not quite as pink. I don't get too much fallout from these, by the way, which is really nice. And I'm putting this in the center of the crease just so you can see a difference between the two shades. You can see it is slightly deeper. I'm going to be honest though, you guys, once you blend it out, shades kind of serve the same purpose, which I don't love. Yes, there is a slight difference, but I just worry with these being the only five shades available to you that they might be too close. It is a bit deeper and I suppose that is going to help with a better blend. They're a bit too close for comfort. So then <laughs> I'm going to head into the cream to powder in Wink and you'll see with this shade you get zero fallout. But a complaint with this is sometimes it's harder to pick up the shadow on a brush. I'm using an Olimar Cosmetics Detailed Diffuser Brush and I put this as the outer corner color and I am building it up. But you can see it's very beginner friendly because it is blending nice and easily and it's building up pretty well. I wish it would go just a tad deeper. It's not giving me the total depth that I would like, but it's working out very pretty. My initial goal with all of this was to be able to see all three shades in the transition and honestly especially with these two shades I do think they are a bit too close because if you wanted a mid-tone shade you can get a mid-tone shade with this one if you don't build it up because I added layer and layer to get this depth so there are a lot of mattes in this palette which I do like I, I feel like sometimes palettes don't have enough mattes this serves you well there are four mattes by the way I'm gonna take some more of the cream to powder and I'm going to work it a little bit more inward to get a little bit more depth. I would swatch the three shades that I used today and my concern is that they all are around the same depth level. There are a little bit of differences here but I just don't think all three were necessary because if I just use this shade and this shade, it would have given me this effect. Like these two shades are way too close in my opinion. And the cream to powder is also kind of close. But that's me being really critical. At the end of the day, they all are fine quality. Okay, so now I really wanted to play with this shade, which is Bruno. It's the creamy matte. I'm using a rougher brush for this, because this is the one that swatched really skippy. It felt a little drier than her normal formulation. And I'm going to place this in the outer corner. Let's see how she blends. So whatever's left over on my brush, I'm using my Sigma Switch to get that off. And we're going to work it out. Always blend with a clean brush, even if you just wipe it off somewhere, because if you still had color on this, it would 
be very hard to control. And I don't know if you guys can see, but it is blending quite easily. I do notice a little bit of color collecting right here, but that's pretty typical. It's my eye. It's normally not the product, it's the eye because I had no trouble on this side. So just be wary. Maybe if you put too much down at once, it might collect. And in that case, you just go a little bit softer on the brush. But for the most part, no issues with the blending here. Now I haven't put it on a large area of the eye. I haven't fully tested its true capabilities, but most of you, I can guarantee, are just gonna kind of do what I do. And in that case, I haven't, I have no issues really. I'm using my Natasha Denona Brown Eye Crayon. Putting that in the waterline. I love this pencil, by the way. I'm gonna take some more of Bruno just because I want it kind of smoky. Now I put all of those colors underneath just because I wanted to test them, but you could get away with just putting the pink shade plush all along the lower lash line and then put this right on top. You didn't need to layer like I did. So at the end of the day, we just want her smoky. And again, you can see this brown shade is perfect forming quite nice not really having issues with it so I like it okay and then finally of course we have the middle shade here so I wanted to demo it with a brush for you so I'm gonna use my ESMW 21 brush from my set I wouldn't say this is a unique color from Natasha Denona pretty much in all of her palettes she's gonna have kind of like a champagne -y shade like this to put all over the lid I wish instead of this shade she gave us a rose shimmer something that was more of a stronger rose i think that would have been really pretty but again i'm being picky because this is my job this is a gorgeous shade i love that you can see there is a lot of reflex i was hoping that this shade would give us oomph and it did so i'm very happy with that i'm going to take more of a small brush this is from coastal sense r.i.p and not a cut crease but like a faux cut crease you know just give it a little bit more interest here. Love that. I've loved more blended, simple looks recently. So I love the faux cut crease technique that I've been doing just to mimic it, but it still looks really blown out and effortless. Okay, so I'm gonna build up more of Bruno in the outer corner on both eyes. You want her smoke, hey? Then I'm taking that very first crease brush that I used. I'm gonna take the pink shade and we're just gonna blend everything out in case there's anything that you feel in the edges isn't good. And if you want to go the extra mile, you can take some of that pink and kind of use it to buff out the lower eye here. If you want it to look even more smoky and blended, I bet you this would be pretty as a blush. I really like the shade. Okay, so let me finish the eye look with some lashes and I will be back to give you my final thoughts on this. So here's the final eye look. I use the Natasha Denona Brown Liner just to create the inner and outer corner wing and then I will have lashes and actually lips linked down below. But I absolutely love how it came together. It's really pretty. Now, is this a unique look? that I can only get with this palette. No, I mean, you go in when you buy this knowing it's another rosy neutral palette, which can be easily duplicated, but I didn't have any problems with the formula. I think it's really pretty. So I'm going to take you to comparison swatches next so that you can see how this compares to some other Natasha palettes. Okay, so the first comparison that I have is between the Mini Biba and the Big Biba. You need to see them side by side. Here is how they're looking. But where the T is, is the swatches. On my hand, this is the Mini Biba and this is the Biba Biba. <laughs> <laughs> Big Biba. Honestly, you guys, the formulation has to be different. The full size Biba look, full cream, full opacity, no skipping. And I didn't have a problem with this formulation from the mini Biba on the eye, but you can totally see the differences there just within the swatch. These seem to be a bit drier. They do apply on the lid fine though, so don't be too worried about that, but I think they're definitely different and I'm, I like the Biba formula better. I mean, the tones are definitely different in the mini Biba, but not so much. Definitely, this is going to be more neutral. This one leans more rosy, which is exactly what they claim, so that's true. But those are Biba versus mini Biba. Now, the closest resemblance, what immediately reminded me of the mini Biba is the new Glam Face palette that just came out. So I'm gonna show you the eyeshadows compared to the eyeshadows in the Glam light face palette so this is the lighter version and we'll do the cheeks as well when we get to the cheek palette by the way so you can see complete different under
undertones. Again, the Glam Face Palette's a little bit more neutral. And then in terms of the shimmers, so this is the Glam Face Palette, by the way. The shimmers are different than the shimmer in the Mini Biba. I know a lot of you were hoping it would be the same shimmer. It is not. These have more reflex in it. They're a little bit more flaky dryness, but in a way that adds more dimension. Overall, honestly, I do prefer the eyeshadows in the Glam Face palette. They're more my speed, but they don't really look too similar. But let's dive into the deeper one. Okay, so it's definitely more similar to the Light Face palette. These two look very, very different. I don't even need to tell you which one is which. So if you have the deeper face palette, you definitely could get away with the Mini Biba. I got a lot of questions about Mini Nude versus Mini Biba. Mini Nude is at the bottom. Mini Biba is at at the top. Honestly, these are not as similar as I thought they would be once I swatched them. You can see the tones are different. Here would be Mini Biba, here's Mini Nude. And just because of the formula differences, that also makes them very different because there are three shimmers in Mini Nude. These two shades are kind of close, but honestly, they're related, but they definitely aren't sisters or even cousins. So I think you're in the clear if you have the Mini Nude. And then some other ones that you wanted me to show you, but honestly, I don't think are comparable but just if you need for reference. Here is Mini Biba over the Camel palette. Complete different tones for sure. Mini Nude is definitely closer to Camel. The other one you guys wanted to see was Mini Glam and these are very, very different from one another. All right guys, it is time to dive deep into the Rose Cheek Duo. This little guy is just the cutest thing. So this is $19. And it says this palette is made in Italy and has an 18 month shelf life, which is pretty good. Here's what the component looks like itself. I have a baby hand, but just so you can see compared to the full size Natasha Denona Biba, this is itty bitty tiny. So these are also two brand new shades. And in here you're getting her cream blush formula and then you're getting the super glow highlight formula. Let's go ahead and swatch these. I'm really interested in this blush formula because the blush formula in the glam face palettes I thought dried really quickly they're already dry I just bought them so I hope that doesn't happen with this but let's see let me feel the cream blush okay it has a drier consistency to it and then the powder is very creamy and silky. I'd honestly argue that going through the powder felt more silky than the cream blush. The cream blush feels a little drier to me. So here's the cream blush. You can see not a ton of pigmentation. And then the highlight doesn't seem to be extra blitzy, which is not a bad thing, by the way. Let's just see how it applies. So the first way that I'm going to try to apply the blush is with a BK Beauty 106 brush. Let's see how that picks up. Okay, so it's leaving a really pretty kind of natural flush. Very, very natural, I would say. That's what it looks like. I do have a powder bronzer underneath and I did set the center of my face as I normally do with powder. But this seems to be applying very nice. I don't notice it moving anything underneath. I'm gonna try and apply it with a sponge. This is from Shop Miss A. I feel like it's not picking up as good with the sponge. When I dig in a second time, it got easier, but I think the density of this brush is agreeing with this formula more. I don't know about this formula. In the past, I've really loved Natasha Denona's cream blush formulas. And I actually really like this application with this brush. But there's something about them that's different now. And I I'm worried that this is going to dry out. Anyways, here's how the blush looks. And it beautifully complements the eyeshadow. I'm trying to get close. I don't notice any picking up of the product underneath, really. But... It is acting kind of weird with the concealer right now. I don't know if you can see this line, and I don't love this. A lot of cream products do this, so it is acting weird with that. I'm skeptical about this cream blush, you guys. Mmm, now that I'm looking close, I don't know if you can see right here, it is acting weird with the products underneath. I might be being a little bit too picky. I'm definitely going to have to continue to play with this more. I like it, but I don't love it. Let's move on to the highlight now. So here is the highlight. It's the Super Glow Formula. I'm using a Kaleidos H1 brush. Really beautiful. 
So this is pretty, and I don't think it's too blingy either. It's that beautiful Natasha Denona Super Glow Formula. I think if you're really fair, this actually might be a bit too dark on you because it's like the perfect shade for me. I really like it and it looks really smooth. So I do enjoy the highlight a lot. I'm gonna take some of that and we're gonna put it right in the inner corner. So you can see it's not a white blinding highlight, which I like. So that's how the cheek products are looking. Let's get into comparisons. Let's get into the comparisons with the Rose Cheek Duo. So immediately I wanted to go into the cheek products in the Glam Face Light palette. Let me show you how they compare. So here they are next to one another. And right here is the Rose Duo. Here is the Glam Face palette. So the Glam Face highlight is instantly much brighter. And then the Rose, it has more of a rosy tone, whereas the Glam Face palette's more peachy. Here's my concern. The peachy blush in the face palette has already dried out on me. And the Rose Cheek Duo feels like it's going to do the same. It feels like the same formula. So I uh, am predicting within the next two weeks this might dry out, especially since there really isn't a cover and it's really not an airtight closure. So I do worry about that. I will have to keep you updated because I can't speak on that now. But you can see the blush has more pigment, but I think that's because there's just more moisture in it right now. But I'm really worried about this. I don't know, you guys. I only have one other little mini cheek duo, but I wanted to show you the difference. So here's the rose, and then this is the blush glow duo. Now the blush glow duo is powder. It's not a cream blush, but these are the color differences. My old one definitely is more cool, and then this is a complete different formulation, but that's how those compared. I was just curious. I was going to compare it to the love glow cheek duo, but honestly, everything about this palette is different. The highlight's super different. The cream blush is a different formulation, so I'm not going to do a comparison of that. And then I wanted to compare the formulation of the blush in the love cheek duo that came out last February. So the Love Cheek Duo is a little bit brighter, but they are two different formulations. I don't know what formulation was in the Love Cheek Duo, but it's different, and then obviously the highlights aren't the same. I mean, from what I have, I don't have dupes of the cheek palette, but what I was more concerned about was that blush formula. And to me, it does feel like it is the same formula in the face palette, so. All right, guys, so here are my final thoughts about everything. Um, I honestly feel like Natasha didn't put her best foot forward with this launch. I think everything is good. And for the price, I don't think you, she's ripping you off or anything. If these are products that you are interested in, I don't think that you'd be too disappointed, especially with the eyeshadow palette. It is very pretty. I didn't have any problems with the quality. Obviously, it's not the most unique color story under the sun, but what hasn't been done at this point, I think it's really pretty. So if this is a color story that you're into, it's worth giving it a try. There were some minor changes that I would make to the color story if I could, but it's fine. It's not my favorite palette of hers, but it's not in the bad category either. Now, the Rose Cheek Duo, I... Mm. I recommend the eyeshadow palette more than this. I think the highlighter is really pretty. The blush I do need to keep an eye on because I do worry that it might dry out. It wasn't the easiest to apply and I did notice some weird things on my face but I wanna test it with different products to see if that's what it was first. So I'm not sure about this yet. I'd almost recommend you go into her true powder mini duos just because these I think are a little bit more reliable. But I'll get back to you in a couple weeks and I'll let you know what happens with this. So I hope you guys guys enjoyed this review and you found it helpful if you picked either of these products up let me know down below your thoughts and as you know we are in the middle of vlogmas so i will see you guys tomorrow bye guys have a good one